All right, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto Yahweh. Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Arakakwadash. I want to give double honor to Apostle Tahar, and other elders and apostles that are fervently in the spirit, whose labors we have entered into. Today's lesson is titled, uh, The Faith of Our Great Forefathers, right? Because ultimately, these, uh, these accounts of our forefathers, the, speaking of the faithful ones, right, ultimately is here to build up our faith because when we read these different accounts about our forefathers being delivered from, uh, you know, different perils and different trials and tribulations and seeing how they, they, they stood tall for the Heavenly Father while Yahweh shy and how they were delivered from these uh, these different situations, ultimately it helps build up our faith. Right. And that's why the Heavenly Father still has these scriptures written, written, written here for us, man. Right. Because like it says in Romans chapter 15, verse four. So like the noise. Uh, like it says in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, uh, these things were written aforetime for uh, our learning and that we, through uh, reading the scriptures, we have comfort and hope. You see, because that, that actually builds up your faith, that exhorts you, that, that makes you believe that, damn, all right, the Heavenly Father brought my forefather through this, and I'm an Israelite just like he is, and he's dealing with me, right? So he's going to be there for me the same way, you see? So ultimately, right, we need that faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please the Heavenly Father. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start off right there in Hebrews 11 and 6, right? Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Heavenly Father must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, right? So we see how many times throughout the scriptures, right? The Heavenly Father rewards our forefathers for having faith in him, for trusting in him. So ultimately, that builds us up just to reiterate it, that he's going to be there for us the same way, you see. So I want to grab a couple uh, uh, scenarios of that. Right. You know, you have our forefather, uh, Daniel. Right. He displayed great faith, man. Right. Like, as you can see, the, uh, the heading, right. Den, the den of lions. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. Uh, Daniel chapter six and verse uh, verse three. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm, right? So I believe this king was Darius, right? And I believe that was the, uh, the prince, uh, the king of Persia, right? So basically, uh, I believe there were uh, like, uh, you know, uh, like I think two or three other people or, or a certain amount of people that were on Daniel's level, right? Don't quote me on it, right? And um, out of those different people, they was like, they was uh, jealous of Daniel. And Daniel basically, you know, was uh, like basically the king's favorite, to be honest. And they, they thought that, like, find some way to, you know, catch Daniel up. And the only thing that they can come up with is him, you know, uh, uh, praying to his power. Right. Which was which is Yahweh. Right. And ultimately, they, they had the king, the king, unbeknownst to him. Right. Set up a decree where if he if he finds that any anybody's praying to their God. Right. Anybody's praying to their power that they should be thrown in their lion's den. But Daniel knew this and he, and he went to go pray anyway. Right. So I'm going to read it, Daniel 6 and 10. It says, now when Daniel uh, knew that it's, uh, that the writing was signed, what I just told you all about, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his power as he did a four time, right? And then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication to his power, right? So ultimately, they, you know, they, that, that was the only way they can try to catch him up and, and, and they caught him up. But ultimately, it's, it's to their own demise anyway, right? So I'm going to read on. I'm going to skip down to verse 22. Daniel 6 and 22, it says, My my power have sent his angel and have shut up the lion's mouth that have not, uh, slack it, that they have not hurt me. For as, as before him, innocency, innocency was found in me. What does that innocency mean? Innocent. Innocency mean? It means purity, man, right? Daniel was pure. Daniel was clean, right? It says, I'm going to read it again. Uh, My power have sent his angel and have shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him. Innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that he should take Daniel out of the den. Right. So speed and fast forward. Right. Daniel was down in the den and they actually starved those lions to the point where they would be hungry. But for some reason, right, which we know what the reason was, the Heavenly Father was with Daniel, man, right? He, he gave the angels to uh, uh, the um, 
charged to encamp around the belt, Daniel, to make sure he's uh he's safe, right? To close those to close those lions' mouths, and ultimately he was delivered from that lions' den. Why? And it's gonna run when I read on. It's gonna show because he had faith, man, right? So I read on. It says then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded they they, they should take Daniel out of the lions' den. Out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his power. You see, he believed, he trusted. He trusted in the Heavenly Father. You see? And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and cast the, uh, and it's like and they cast them into the den of the lions, them and their children and their wives. And the lions had, had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces, and over they came at the bottom of the den. So that's the point, man. Do you see what happens when you trust in the Heavenly Father? When we read about our great forefathers, how the Heavenly Father didn't allow them to be confounded, man. Right? So he's going to be there for us the same way. And, and, and accounts like this are written in here so that way we can have our faith built up. Right? So that way we can please the Heavenly Father. So the Heavenly Father can look at us and, and, and see the innocency and the purity in us, man. Right? And that's what we want. Because ultimately, we're going to need the Heavenly Father, man. We need him every day. You see? But but ultimately, like I read in Hebrews 11 and 6, we need the Heavenly Father. It's like we need to uh to show our faith to the Heavenly Father. And nobody that trusts in the Heavenly Father is going to be confounded pursuing the, uh, I think that's Sirach, Sirach the second chapter. All right. You can also read that. I think that's in Maccabees. Sirach chapter 1 and verse 10. Uh, Sirach chapter, Sirach chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in Hadawan and was confounded? You just read it. You just saw Daniel. He wasn't confounded. His enemies was. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Right? So that's the point, man. Right? Let me read on. It says, for Hadawan is full of compassion and merciful, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgive of sins and save of in time of affliction. Right? So that's the point. He's going he's gonna to save us in time of affliction. But all we have to do is just continue to have faith. That's it, right? Let me get let me get the uh, account with uh, with Elijah, right? Because that's another one of our forefathers that showed great faith, man. And the heavenly Father, you know, He blessed them, right? So First Kings chapter, yeah, I'm gonna get this. First Kings chapter two, uh, First Kings chapter seventeen, verse two, right? And it says, um, yeah, so it says that it should be not doing rain, but according to my word, right? So I, I believe this was like a, um, it was a famine in the land or something like that, right? And the heavenly father provided food and, and drink for Elijah. So let's go ahead and read this. First Kings 17 and 2. And the word of Hadawan came unto him saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, Cherith, that it is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Right. So and let's see what he did. So he went and did according to the word of Hadawan. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him food, bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So the point is, right. Say if Elijah didn't believe the words of Hadawan. Right. So this is why we need faith, because we need to believe and be persuaded. And what we're reading is true. You see, because. What if an angel or what if the heavenly father comes to you during Jacob's trouble and says, I need you to go here and you don't believe it right now. You stop. Now you now you're not going to reap the benefits of what it is that the heavenly father was trying to bestow upon you, man. What if Elijah just said, nah, I, I don't believe that. You know, I got a couple of pieces of bread right here. I'm going to just ride this out and, and, and try to ration this out and I'll be cool. The heavenly father, you know, <laughs> what do you think the heavenly father would have did? You see? But ultimately, Elijah showed faith, and then by him showing his faith, the Heavenly Father, you know, didn't have him confounded because he was basically when you have faith, you you're going out on a limb. When really you're not, because the Heavenly Father got you. But the whole time, ultimately, like because you can't see it, man, right? Ultimately, you can't you can't really see it. You're just trusting that the Heavenly Father is going to come through, which that's a sure basket. But at the end of the day, carnally speaking, you can't see it, man. You just you go you going out on a, you going out on a limb, and the heavenly Father gonna reward you for that because you trusting in Him, and anybody that trusts in Him, speaking of you know our our nation, right? He gonna he gonna reward you for that, man. Hebrews eleven, verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? 
Because what if a demon was trying to be in Elijah mind saying, yeah, 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 you're going to go there and ain't going to be shit. It ain't going to be nothing there. You see, that's how, you know, that's how I can play. And that's why you need faith, man. Right. Because you need faith to break through whatever it is that's trying to come into your mind or anything, man. Right. Because you got to be you got to be fully persuaded. Right. Hebrews 11 to 13. Right. It says because when you read up, it talks about, you know, our different forefathers like Noah. Right. Uh, Abraham. You see. All right. So I'm going to read this. Hebrews 11 to 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So that's the point, man. So even though they didn't receive the, those promises like that, which are still going to be fulfilled, you know, uh, in the future. Right. Because it wasn't like it wasn't the appointed time for those those promises to take uh, uh, into full effect. But they still believed, you see. And the evidence, right, right, whereas though the evidence wasn't really there carnally, but they believed and they knew and they moved off that faith like Noah, like Abraham, and they were rewarded for it, you see? And the Heavenly Father, he's going to keep that covenant. He's going to keep that promise that he made with Abraham, right? He's going to he's going to give us that, you know, he's going to give us, uh, you know, uh, it's like he's going to give Abraham that, 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 that promise that he bestowed upon him, our forefather, King David. You see that he he will always have it descended upon the throne, Yahweh Shai. You see, so this is this is these are the benefits of having faith in Yahweh Yahweh Shai, man. You know, and this is why we have to continue to have our faith continue to be increased right now in this time, man. And for those you know who, who are struggling with that, you know, you want to ask the he heavenly Father to uh to increase your faith, man, because that's something that you're going to need during Jacob's show. That's something that you need every day, man. Ultimately, right by doing this work, you know, if you don't have no faith, then you don't believe that what, what you're actually doing is, is going to be profitable, right? And, and then if you don't believe it's profitable, then ultimately you're going to wind up not persevering, you know, through whatever obstacle you got to go through. So that way you can you can continue to go through uh, uh to to continue to abide in the, uh, in this labor, man. So that way you can reap the reward. You won't believe it. So ultimately, that's going to lead to you falling out. So you want to continue to have that faith be uh, be built upon. You want to continue to pray for more faith, right? Where does that say that uh, increase our faith, All right? KJV. Let me get that for y'all. Boom. Right, Luke seventeen and five. It says, and the apostle said unto Hadawan, increase our faith. And Hadawan said. <clears throat> If you have uh, faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sick of mine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and I'll uh, and slack it and be thou planted in the sea and it shall obey you. Right. So basically just saying, just show a little bit, man. And the heavenly father, he's going to keep building upon that. Right. So just continue to show your faith and you show your faith by your actions, your works. You see, and the heavenly father, he's going to continue to work with you. Right. As long as you're willing to work, you know, and, and willing to grow. Right. Let me go ahead and grab this and this, uh, you know, be the last scripture I pull. Mark nine and twenty four. Right. Where is that? At? Mark nine. Yeah, Mark nine and twenty four. And it says. Um, let me see. Let me start at verse three. Yahweh shall said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. So, yeah, you want to ask the heavenly father to, 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 to bestow great faith upon you, man. Because if you feel yourself lacking in that, man, you need to, you know, you need to increase that, you know, because that's that, we're going to need that in Jacob's trouble, man. We're going to need that now. Right. But definitely in Jacob's trouble. So this is the time. You know, while you still have access to videos, right? You still have, have access to, you know, you know, uh, scriptures that you may not know, learning from other brothers, you know, getting built up, getting edified, right? You you want to take advantage of that now, right? Because ultimately, man, you know, if you don't have it, if you find yourself lacking in faith during Jacob's trouble when it's all out hell out here, you know, you know, you, you, you're not going to find yourself in a good place, man. You're going to find yourself wavering. And that's that's not the spirit you want to be in. Right. So I want to uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end off there. 
I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. And I, and I say, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, work a thumb to all you sincere hearted true believers, man. Shalom.